the topic under discussion today is about the analgesics now this topic is going to be discussed in a very easy way how like just concentrate first of all i'll tell you people what is the term analgesics then i'll tell you people the difference between the opioids and ansets we we'll compare these together after that we'll discuss the opioids in detail but not the answers why because answers have already been discussed in our other videos you can search them out and then we'll talk about the receptors of the opioids the drugs their mechanism of actions and their overdose how to counter the overdose we'll talk about all these in a very precise to the point and easy way so let's get started from the very first point the term analgesics it is actually composed of two further terms number one algesia number two and algesia stands for and it means pain and means no without so when you combine these together we'll get another term analgesics which means without pain no pain so what is actually this term used for very simple the drugs that we are using to alleviate or to relieve the pain this term is actually used for those drugs so in short now what will be the analgesics these are actually the drugs that are used to relieve the pain and we have two types of such kind of analgesics number one opioids analgesics number two ansets opioids they are also known as narcotics and ansets are such analgesics which are non narcotics next is opioids are only used for relieving the pain whereas ansets are used for relieving both the pain and inflammation and we do have many other differences also available regarding the opioids and ansets the very next one and important one is that these opioids are acting actually on the central nervous system whereas the ansets are acting on the periphery okay periphery so they act peripherally and they act centrally now these are the very differences that will help you out to understand and difference between the opioids and ansets for further information visit our lectures on the ansets now we'll continue our discussion from the opioids further opioids this term is actually used for the group of drugs we have number of drugs so for all those drugs we are using one term that is opioids now these opioids are acting on the central nervous system these actually mimic copy endorphins and caffeines and dynorphins these all are actually the endogenous neurotransmitters now these neurotransmitters are helping us feel easy calm relaxed happy okay so what we do we take opioid drugs number of drugs these drugs are also helping us to become happy calm and they are also helping us to relieve the pain that's it very simple now let's come to where's the next point the types of the opioids we have types on the basis of the production and we have some types on the basis of the actions now on the basis of production we have certain types like naturally semi synthetically synthetically we do obtain these drugs from the natural sources like uh, we have the plants named papaver somniferum now from these plants we obtain these drugs naturally and those which are obtained naturally they are then further uh, somehow modified chemically then they are named as semi synthetic and those which are prepared without the interruption of the plants then they are actually named as synthetic It means we can obtain from natural sources and semi synthetic opioids which are actually made from the natural and synthetic which are man made okay not from the plants so these are on the basis of the production types then we have on the basis of actions some are acting strongly then we have moderate acting drugs then we have mixed acting here are some examples like heroin morphine fentanyl and fentanyl etc etc these are the drugs which are having very strong actions on the central nervous system okay then we have moderately acting like codeine then we have mixed acting here we have buprenorphine butorphanol and fentazosin these are actually dose dependent drugs when you increase the dose of these drugs their actions are actually changed from slow to moderate to high and even they can cause toxic effect means when we overdose these drugs and now let's come towards the receptors we have certain receptors for these drugs like mu kappa and delta these are the three receptors which are available in the central nervous system and they are actually responsible to show their actions or to give the action to these drugs when we take these drugs they will act on these receptors and then they will show their action and the action is like to alleviate the pain means they will relieve the pain so now let's know the mechanism of action of these drugs how these drugs are actually going to show their actions here you got the actions are actually a strong moderate and mixed okay they all have got certain type of mechanism of action which i will explain through this diagram 
Now this mechanism of action is going to be made very simple and easy. Just concentrate. First of all, as the pain signal generates in the neuron, as the neuron is sensitized for what? For to carry the signal of the pain. So this neuron will be depolarized and this neurotransmitter which is present in this neuron, particular neuron, that will be released into the synapses. Then that next neuron is waiting for this particular signal. So like this, the neurons will be carrying this signal towards your central nervous system. And like this, the pain's signals are generated and will be sensed by your body and you will feel uncomfortable. So what we do, we take these drugs. Now these are actually helping us to relieve the pain. So what they are doing is very simple. As we take these all opioids, they will target certain receptors, mu, kappa, and delta, which are actually G protein coupled receptors. These receptors, when they are stimulated by these drugs, opioids, they will do certain actions. How like, very simple. They will inhibit the calcium channels present on this neuron, presynaptic neuron, which is carrying the signal. And they will stimulate potassium channels it means they will open the potassium channels so what will happen very simple we know that when g protein coupled receptor is stimulated specifically which one mu kappa and delta from all these mu is most responsible for all these purposes okay now this when is stimulated first of all it will open the potassium channel so what will happen then the potassium will start moving outside inside will become negative outside will become positive we know this very well when the inner side of a cell is becoming positive that will undergo the depolarization means the signal will be carried but now here what is happening because of receptor stimulation that is when opioids stimulate mu kappa delta receptors they will open the potassium channels and potassium will start moving out inside will become negative now this negativity when is created will cause hyperpolarization means then there won't be any further depolarization signal won't be carried signal won't be carried and what next is happening here the same gpcr mu receptor is inhibiting the calcium channels so what will happen then when the calcium channels are inhibited then there won't be any calcium available and we know the function of the calcium when the calcium is available here this calcium has got double positive charge now this one positive will attach with the neurotransmitter attach with the vesicle in which the neurotransmitter is enclosed and the second positive will attach with the terminal of the neuron like this this calcium is actually fusing this vesicle with the terminal and at the end there will be the release of the neurotransmitter so now what we are doing these opioids will stimulate the mu receptor which is GPCR, this will stimulate the potassium channels. So like this, the potassium channels will open and the same signal is coming for the calcium channels, which will become closed. So now closure of the calcium channels and opening of the potassium channels will lead to what? Hyperpolarization of the neuron and there won't be the release of the what? Neurotransmitters. Why? Because calcium is no more allowed to come in. When there is no any influx of the calcium, so then there won't be the fusion of the vesicle with the neuron. In short, there won't be the release. So what we did, by means of opioids, by means of opioids, we hyperpolarized the neuron. Signal is no more going to be carried. And we blocked the calcium channels. Like this, there won't be any calcium influx. So there won't be the release of the neurotransmitters. So what we did in short, we hyperpolarized the neuron and we inhibited the release of the neurotransmitter. So like this, what will happen at the end? There won't be the transmission of the signal. So like this, the transmission of the signal is actually inhibited, stopped. So like this, then we will not be feeling pain. Like this, all these drugs, opioids are alleviating our pain. They are decreasing the sensation of our pain. Okay, so that's the very mechanism of action. What happens in some cases when a person uses these uh, opioids in a sense of narcotics means when a person becomes overdose or if there is a kind of mistake from the medical practitioners. So what will happen then? At the end of the day, we'll be having overdose. So that overdose may cause lethal effect. Means overdose of these opioids may lead to death of the particular patient or a person. So what will we do then in that case, if we see the overdose of these drugs, overdose of the opioids, we will indicate naloxone and naltroxone. These are actually the antagonist or you can say the antidote for all these opioids. I hope you got the mechanism of actions of all these drugs. And that's it all from my side. I hope you got, if still you have confusion, drop in the comment box.